Well, good morning. I am not Pastor Tony Fink. My name is Dean Sorum, and I am a volunteer here at Pine Island United Methodist Church. Pastor Tony is on vacation, and this morning we had Pastor Bruce Bueller helping us with the nine o'clock worship service. This weekend is Memorial Day weekend, and we had a special part of our service dedicated to those that had passed in this last year and, and earlier. This is a shortened video of the uh, full worship service that occurred this morning. And so we appreciate those that are able to connect and uh, we hope that you enjoy this shortened version and Pastor Tony will be back next week. Again, have a great Memorial Day weekend. Thanks, bye-bye. To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, children. Ah, yes, we're all children of the Heavenly Father. I want to uh, I want to call your attention this morning to Psalm 29. That's the psalm for the day. It's not printed in your worship order, but uh, Psalm 29 is a poem. Now, poetry is described by putting it in broken sentences. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Those are two lines of poetry. They parallel each other. That's how poetry goes in the Old Testament. The, uh, the psalm is an old psalm. Ascribe to the Lord glory to his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Yahweh is mentioned, but it's heavenly beings that are called to praise God. The stars, the moon, the sun, they would have equated all of them together. I want to call your attention to verse 9. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl. And my Bible has a footnote. Causes the deer to calf. Now, I don't know why they didn't put that in the text. I thought that was maybe too much for Sunday morning. Uh, I like it. Uh, causes the deer to have their young. That's a good word. Uh, but the thunder works that way. Now, the voice of the Lord. That's what I want to talk to you about a bit this morning. The word for voice in the Hebrew is kol. And, of course, God's name in the Old Testament is Yahweh. So the men sat in the front, then the women in the back, and the Gentiles were off somewhere else uh, as part of the worshiping community. But let's do it together. It's kol Yahweh. Can you say that with me? Kol Yahweh. Ah, oh, that sounded more like thunder all the time. Seven times it happens. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Yes, let's do it together. Kol Yahweh. Kol Yahweh. Kol Yahweh. Seven times. And God's name is praised. I like the song. It used to come in the liturgy in January. We don't have thunderstorms in January. But on the 30th of May, as I walked out this morning, it began to sprinkle on my head. And I thought, Kol Yahweh. Thank you so much for doing that with me this morning. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I am Jody Krause, and I am our scripture reader today. Our, scripture, our gospel lesson is John 3, 1 through 17. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one 
For no one could do these miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible to see God's kingdom. Nicodemus asked, how is it possible for an adult to be born? It's impossible to enter the mother's womb for a second time and be born, isn't it? Jesus answered, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the spirit, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Don't be surprised that I said to you, you must be born anew. God's spirit blows wherever it wishes. You hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. It's the same with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said, How are these things possible? Jesus answered, You are a teacher of Israel, and you don't know these things. I assure you that we speak about what we know and testify about what we have seen, but you don't receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven and the Son of, of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will, be, will have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but will have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Greetings this morning. This is Memorial Weekend. I needn't remind you of that, you know that. And perhaps the grill is uh, warming up at some of your homes today and uh, you're getting ready to invite family to join you. So many things go through my mind this morning. Tomorrow, in years gone by, I'd get up early and go fishing for a while. But at 10 o'clock in the morning, we would meet at the rural cemetery at Painesville Salem Church. I almost did that in the German, but uh, I'd better not do that this morning. Um, the church is a few miles north of town on a gravel road across the road from the cemetery. My great-grandfather and great-grandmother my grandparents, my mother and father, my wife, are now buried there. They've gone home. I'm going to go there tomorrow and say a prayer. I may get there this afternoon also. Two prayers are better than one. I'm grateful to go to the cemetery to worship for a moment. Lowell Guess, eye surgeon who now lives in Alexandria, but who spent more than 40 years as an eye surgeon in Sierra Leone, at Kissy Eye Hospital, now Guess Eye Hospital, came from that community years ago. He tells of climbing a long ladder to hang the curtains in the tabernacle, and that's quite a feat. It's a long way up there. When we celebrated that 50th anniversary a few years ago at Salem Church, the young woman from Sierra Leone was there. Dr. Guess had delivered her from her mother who was dying until she came to see him carried on a sling for a few miles over the terrain. She simply said, thank you. What does one say when you look at the doctor who delivered you from your mother? I don't know the answer, I just know she said, thank you. Good morning. May you be blessed as you remember Decoration Day, or now called Memorial Day. We do more than roast burgers and wieners on this day, we remember those who gave their lives in service to our country. I'm remembering Charlie, the tank commander, and John, the infantryman, and Lyle, the uh, pilot, or the person who directed the airplane, or the teacher when he came home. Yeah. To the text for this day. We were in Bible study at West End Church in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, uh, this place is huge, but uh, the place in Nashville is bigger. Uh, it's uh, neo-Gothic. Uh, it, it's like Hamlin Church, only bigger. 
with glass windows all the way around like your church, but it, it is huge. We were in Bible study in a classroom and uh, they handed out Bibles uh, to those who didn't have them. Some had the red letter text for John 3 all the way through the chapter. And for some it ended at verse 13. So John 3.16 came out black. How can that be? We had a good discussion on how one determines where to put the red letter edition because Jesus would have said it. I think John 3.16 is the commentary of the church on all that goes before it. And when I think of it that way, it changes the text for me. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Yes. Good discussion for a long while uh, because we talked about how God gives the son. This morning I want to comment on the words of this text. First to put the text in the present tense for us for today. God loves this world. And those who believe have eternal life now. God gave his only son for this saving task. Everyone is included. Now it takes me more than one sentence to do that. You'll notice that. But that's the way I read it today. God loves the world. Those who believe have eternal life. God gave his only son for this saving task. Everyone is included. I rejoice in that first those first two sentences. God loves the world. Everyone is included in God's love and saving grace. God loves this world. And everyone is included in God's saving grace. That's our blessing. That's our life. That's the way in which we go each day. So far, that's easy. Now for the difficult part. We follow the Son who was born incarnate into our world through Mary, taught as an itinerant Jewish rabbi in Galilee, Samaria, and Jerusalem, died on the cross to demonstrate how far God's love would go for all of us, was raised as the Christ in the world of the Spirit, spent time with disciples to convince them of this wonderful good news, that's what it means to give the Son for me. There are many Christians who would disagree with what I read. Well, there are so many theories of the atonement one gets tired trying to explain them. I believe God gave the Son that we might have life. Simple as that. That's what it means to give the Son. When does this happen? Well, the incarnation and the atonement are part of God's act for us. We live because Jesus the Christ, our Lord, Jesus the Christ, our Lord, lives in us. I put a comma between each one of those because to say Jesus is to talk about the incarnate one, to say that Christ is the eternal one, to say our Lord is someone whom I've chosen to be my Lord, and when does it happen? Before we're born into this world. I can't tell you where it happens, but I want to say it's, it is part of us before we're born into this world. And now that's my answer. And we may want to talk about that later uh, because you may have another understanding. That's okay. We talk about how we live in faith and how we say that faith to each other. We are saved through the work of the Son through the presence of the Spirit, in the intent of the Father, the Creator, the Eternal One, in whom all three persons work. Again, we may need to talk about that after the service is over. Everyone is included in this saving gift to us. Individually, we're saved. We may say yes to Jesus. We may come to understand the good news in a number of ways. There are those who have an experience of God in their life and those who grow in that experience from birth on. 
Surely, to live as one who believes includes acting as a believer. It's acting out of one's belief that demonstrates who we are. Together, we're blessed with this gift. We had a conversation at an annual conference that I shall not forget. I think it may have been the one that everybody else forgot, but I remember it. What do we mean by everyone, was the question. There were those who said, some may not choose to share this gift of eternal life, and others may not hear the good news, and some may misunderstand what's being said. About 90%? Oh, come on. Everyone means everyone for me. Those who may not fully understand are as fully understanding as they may be. And all of us have problems listening to the Spirit at work within us. Those who sit and listen to me preach this morning, those Chinese, those Russians, the Romanians, the Israelis, all God's persons are given the Spirit and need to work out what they do in that Spirit within them. That's why to believe and everyone and gives are hard words for us this morning. But we celebrate, for God loves this world. And everyone in the Son has eternal life. Upon that we may agree and sing the praise of the Eternal One. I'm included and so are you, all of you, in God's love and grace this morning. For that we're thankful. For that we remember those who've given their lives and those who continue to live and those who will live. God loves this world, gives the Son, and whoever believes this has life eternal now. Amen. And thank you. Gracious God, bless us with life eternal. In the name of your Son, by the presence and power of your Holy Spirit, may the Eternal One be praised. Amen and amen. Good morning. My name is Michael Lucinning, and I'm a member of the Memorial Committee, and I will lead our service of remembrance this morning. Please join me in the litany of praise. The righteous live forever. Their reward is with God. Those who trust in the Lord will understand truth, and the faithful will abide in love. People, God watches over them. May God's grace be seen in all that we do.
Bear witness to the love of God in this world so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in you generous friends. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.